بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. Today we'll be talking about سورة الفجر. It's a Meccan surah by consensus, and uh, the name of the surah, according to the majority of the tafsir, is Al Fajr. It was uh, revealed after Surah Al-Layl and before Surah Al-Duha and it is the 10th Surah in Revelation 9 preceding it and it was the 10th. Regarding the reason of Revelation there is not a particular reason uh, mentioned by the scholars regarding the uh, Revelation of the Surah. Uh, in this Surah just like many other Surahs in the Quran, and particularly in Juz uh, Amma, uh, it consists and starts off with uh, Allah Azza wa giving an oath. Allah Azza wa in the Surah gives an oath uh, by five different things, indicating their uh, greatness and, uh, and status, and because of the benefits people uh, gain from them. Uh, and because there are signs indicating the ability and the might of Allah Allah starts off the surah saying وَالْفَجْرِ uh, Wow is, is a letter used in Arabic to swear it's an oath letter uh, Wow and Ba and Ta uh, all of these are different letters used in Arabic to, to give an oath so, Wal Fajr means I swear by Al Fajr. Allah Azza wa is swearing by dawn. Uh, Al Fajr here, uh, there are different interpretations amongst the scholars as to what this word Al Fajr, uh, what is it referring to? Some said it was the day of slaughter, the day of Eid in, uh, after Hajj. Uh, and some said, no, it's actually referring to the actual time of dawn, of every day. And this is the predominant opinion. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by uh, dawn, by the crack of the light, which is usually an indication of the end of that previous night before it. Uh, the night departs and the day comes. This alternation of day and night is something that reflects the ability of Allah Azza wa and that He is the Creator and that there is no other than Allah Azza wa none other than Allah Azza wa has that power and control. Mankind does not have control over time. He can't do anything regarding that. So Allah Azza wa is given that as an indication reflecting the greatness of that time which shows the alternation of day and night, the departure of the night and the uh, arrival of uh, the day. Uh, if you, if you want to look at the symbolic uh, meaning of, of this, uh, the end of the night and the beginning of the day is just like uh, life and death, you know. As indicated uh, in some of the texts, when you go to sleep, it's called the minor death. When you when you're when you're resting at night, uh, this is this is resembling your major death. So it's called a minor death. And then at dawn, when people usually or supposedly wake up to pray, uh, they're resurrected again. They get their souls back in their bodies. Uh, and resume life. Uh, now, this this oath Allah Azza wa Jal starts the surah with is uh, actually brings reassurance and glad tidings to the oppressed in uh, in Mecca. Uh, it is the the reason Allah Azza wa Jal swore by this is to tell them that I am the Lord, I am the Creator, I am the authority and power. I'm in control of time and the alternation of day and night. I'm the one who cracks dawn. And just like I crack dawn after 
the darkest part of the night. You know, the darkest part of the night is that which comes immediately before the crack of dawn, right? Just like I crack the dark of dawn, the, the light of dawn after the darkest part of the night, I am going to support you, take you out of this darkness of oppression into the light of authority and establishment for the religion and for you as a state. Allah Azza wa Jal, again, in, in this particular period, this Fajr time, the time of Fajr, uh, Allah Azza wa instilled in that, in that time in particular many acts of worship. Just before that is what's called a sahab in, in Arabic. Allah mentions and praises those who ask forgiveness in al ashab Ashar plural of Sahar. Sahar is that time just preceding the crack of dawn, right? When mustaghfirina bil ashab and those who ask forgiveness from Allah during the time of Sahar. So that's one act of worship. The other act of worship is the prayer itself. And it's one of the greatest prayers of the day. And this is the only prayer Allah Azza wa says, in the Quran al Fajri ka namashhuda. The Quran recited during the prayer of Fajr is witnessed by the angels. After that, you sit and you mention Allah Azza wa you do your adhkar, and for those who are blessed and who have time, that's why I say blessed, those who have time and also blessed to have the uh, determination to sit because many people have the time but don't have determination to worship, to obey. They just give it up because it's optional, right? For those who are blessed and sit in the masjid until the, the uh, duha, the sun rises, and then offer two rak'ahs, all of that period is a period of worship, mentioning Allah. And during that period, angels are supplicating as the Prophet وسلم, whenever someone prays in the masjid and then sits mentioning Allah, the angels continue to ask Allah for his forgiveness and mercy until he either leaves or invalidates his uh, wudu. Uh, and it's a blessed time for your rizq. The Prophet وسلم, said, and this is reported by Ibn Majah and classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, O oh Allah, bless that early time of the day, Bukur. Bukur is that time of Fajr until sunrise, the sun rises. Allahumma barik li ummati fi bukuriha. Oh Allah, bless that time, that period of time for my ummah. So, and, and other texts say that provisions are, are distributed at, the, at that time. So it's, it's a blessed time in all the meaning uh, of the word. It's, it's the time when people uh, go back to life again, start their day after their rest uh, during the night. Then the second verse, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَيَالٍ And by the ten nights. Well, it's not, uh, it came in an indefinite uh, form. وَلَيَالٍ And ten, by ten nights, not the ten nights. Because uh, the definite al uh, is not used here, which is v. Uh, there are different interpretations. Some said it's it's referring to the last ten nights of Ramadan, and some said it's referring to the first ten nights of the Hijjah. And whichever the two, the correct interpretation is. Uh, it is certainly a blessed period. Uh, in, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, there is Laylatul Qadr. And in the first 10 days of the Hijjah, or 10 nights of the Hijjah, the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is in the book of Imam al Bukhari, narrated by Ibn Abbas, he said, There are no days during which performing acts of righteousness is dearer to Allah the Almighty than these 10 days, referring to the 10 days of the Hijjah. Uh, people said, not even performing jihad for the sake of Allah, outside these 10 days that is. He said, no, not even jihad, except for one man, except in one case, a man who goes to jihad with his wealth, taking his own horse, his own sword, his own provisions, Right? 
and his, his soul and does not come back with any of that. Meaning he'll be killed and he loses his wealth for the sake of Allah. That's the only exception outside these 10 days. So Allah Azzawajal is swearing by these great 10 nights. And then Allah Azzawajal goes, another oath, وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ And by the even and the odd. Even and odd. There are multiple, multiple of interpretations regarding what is meant by the even and the odd. Even meaning pairs, right? Uh, some said that the even refers to the day of slaughter, right? Because it's on the 10th, it's an even number. And the odd is uh, referring to the day of Arafah because it's an, on an odd day, it's on the night, at the ninth of the Hijjah. Uh, some said it's referring to the, the even, refer to the even numbered prayers like Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha, and the odd is referring to the odd numbered prayers like Maghrib. Ibn Abbas and, and, and others say uh, that the even is referring to the creation of Allah. Allah has created everything in pairs. And from everything we've created a pair. Male, female, day and night, life and death, sky and earth. Everything is paired. Right? And that the odd, the witr, is referring to Allah as Allah as, as the Prophet said, and this is reported by Ibn Bajah, classified as authentic by Al Albani, and narrated by Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, Inna Allah witrun. Allah is witr. Allah is one, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallayli idha yasr. This is the fifth thing. So, Al Fajr, Layalin Ashr, Al Shafr, Al Watr, and the fifth thing is. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَسْرِ And by the night when it passes or when it departs. Now, what is the best part of the night? That's the last third of the night. That's the best time of the entire night because Allah Azza wa Jal, as the Prophet Sallallahu told us, descends during that night in a way that befits His Majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and asks if anyone is asking forgiveness so he can forgive him, asking for something so he can respond in honor to his request. Right? Allah is, is describing the night as something that passes, that departs fast. Bring into our attention that if you want to instill during these nights, and especially that last part of the night, something good for your hereafter, then take advantage of it before it departs. Because on daily basis, it departs fast, and life in totality also passes fast. Then Allah Azza wa Jal, if you remember when we first started explaining Juz uh, Amma. We said when we spoke about the the surahs that have oaths like this Allah Azza wa makes, we said that every oath in Arabic has at the end something about which Allah Azza wa is given the oath, the expected result. I swear by this, this will take place, or this is true, or so, which is called Jawabu Shabd, the answer, right? The expected answer to the oath, right? In this surah, Allah Azza wa doesn't give the answer and doesn't give clearly what is being sworn about, but it's understood from the context of the verses what Allah Azza wa is giving oath about. Allah Azza wa concludes after these verses, these four verses, 
in which he gave an oath by five things, he said, هَلْ فِي ذَلِكَ قَسَمٌ لِذِي حِجْرٍ Is there not in all the oaths made previously that an oath sufficient and powerful enough for one of perception? Isn't there enough in what was sworn by in these five things? Enough, something sufficient for those who use their mind for those who reflect, for those of perception, to think and have enough or sufficient reasoning or evidence proving to, th to them the ability of the Creator? It's enough. You see, Allah Azzawajal swore by Al-Fajr. The way to find out Fajr has actually cracked is by observing the sky, right? وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوَتْرِ Leave that, right? And if we refer to it as some of the interpretations as the even numbered rak'ahs before uh, dawn and the, the witr is the last uh, rak'ah before dawn, right? In Qiyam al-Layl. وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَسَرْ All of these matters are pertaining to something that you have to observe in the sky for, in order for you to discover, right? And it, again, it is something, as we've spoken about and mentioned repeatedly in different verses, it is Allah is directing their vision and their eyes and their senses to something that they can touch. They can observe on daily basis in their practical life. And by which they can tell the truth from falsehood. They can come to the conclusion that the Creator is Allah Azza wa Jal and that the message of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is true. So what is being sworn about is something that is not clearly mentioned as in different surahs, but it is talking about or it is the subject of reflection on the creation of Allah Azza wa Jal and the consequence of those who deny and reject believing in Allah Azza wa Jal and how Allah Azza wa Jal punishes them in this life and the hereafter. We will conclude with this and resume inshallah in the following session.